The big one is my testosterone level. So that came back. Hey guys, the fitness doc here, and this is a video on my blood work on 100 milligrams of testosterone replacement therapy a week. So as you guys know from my previous videos, I've been on testosterone replacement therapy for a few months now. I am injecting 100 milligrams a week, split at 50 milligrams on Monday and 50 milligrams on Thursday, which is th around three and a half days per shot for a total of, like I said, 100 milligrams a week. I'm feeling amazing, so much better than where I was. I feel hornier, more confident, better muscle tone, I'm stronger in the gym, um, my sleep is better, I feel just more vibrant and have more energy, vigor for life, and my blood results show that it's working, as we'll go through now. So my ACTH, which is my adreno corticotrophic hormone, which controls the level of cortisol that is released in my blood, um, was at 10, and from my last video, my cortisol was slightly low. As you'll see in this current blood work, my cortisol on testosterone replacement therapy is a lot better. Not that that has any direct link, uh, but my cortisol level is a lot better for being a morning level, as I will go through. My growth hormone was 0.1, which is within range, and interestingly, I had tried enclomiphene a few months ago as an experiment, and what I noticed with a lot of my guys taking enclomiphene or clomiphene is that it can suppress growth hormone levels. And in some studies, it can reduce these levels quite significantly by like 40%. And I've seen this on blood work with some of my guys taking enclomiphene. Yes, they get a boost in testosterone, but they get a reduction in IGF-1 and growth hormone, which is interesting. So the fact that I'm on TRT, my growth hormone looks good here at 0.1. My gonadotropin levels, FSH and LH, are less than one, which is expected. My HPT axis, as expected, on 100 milligrams of testosterone is completely shut down, meaning that I'm getting no signaling at all to my testicles, which is fine. I'm fine with that. That's a decision that I've made, and I've been through a lot to make that decision. Like, it hasn't been easy, but I'm happy with the decision because the trade-off has been, I felt so much better. Prolactin at 147 is within range, and my guys who have very high levels of prolactin typically get very reduced sex drive. So I think a few years ago, I floated quite high with prolactin for whatever reason, and my sex drive was very, very minimal. At 147, my sex drive is high, quite high, um, and I do notice anecdotally that guys with very high prolactin levels have very low sex drive and difficulty getting hard and sort of mild gyno symptoms like breast tenderness and usually it's associated with high estrogen too which can very significantly reduce sex drive too. So I'm happy with my prolactin being at, uh, at 147. The big one is my testosterone level. So that came back at 27.0 nanomoles per liter, plugged into a US conversion. That equates to 778.734 nanograms per deciliter, and I am very happy with that. At this level, I feel good. So this was a trough level as well, just before an next, next injection, meaning that I'm probably a lot higher than 27, which is quite interesting, even on 100 milligrams a week, which a lot of people would say is quite low for TRT, um, I'm top of the reference range, you know, at a trough level, almost 800 nanograms per deciliter, so I'm happy with that. I don't want to be at 1,000 or 1,200 or over 1,200 nanograms per deciliter long term, because the goal is just replacement and feeling good, and at 700, 800, I feel really good, um, and I would be sticking with 100 milligrams a week for the foreseeable future because, yeah, I just, I feel good. My cortisol, like I said earlier, uh, this is back up to 413, which it should be higher in the morning, especially because controlling my blood sugar in the morning, as well as it's following a normal circadian rhythm, rhythm as well. So I want it high in the morning and then it can drop off later. When it was low in the previous blood work, I was a bit, bit concerned, but I'm happy that this is higher now, um, especially in the morning at, I got this done at 9 a.m. in the morning. So that's exactly where it should be. Electrolytes, kidney function, urea looks good. I'm really happy with my urea and creatinine because those have been quite high in previous blood tests, especially my urea, which 
has been quite high previously because I train heavy, I have a lot of muscle breakdown, I have a lot of protein in my diet. I have been slightly concerned that my creatinine due to muscle breakdown and urea have been floating quite high nitrogen waste products. I don't want my kidneys filtering a lot of nitrogen waste products chronically throughout my life. So I'm happy that urea is lower. Um, I've introduced some supplements which I'll do a video on and have been drinking a lot more water and um, electrolyte based drinks. So I do feel like this has helped slightly with my kidney health and my EGFR is above 90, which I'm, you know, perfect. That's happy and I'm, that's good for now. My bilirubin is always high. Um, that's just something genetic. All my family has had high bilirubin, so I'm not too concerned about that. What is giving me concern is my AST and ALT levels, which are high. I don't want these to be significantly elevated for a long period of time, especially for my liver enzyme health and keeping my livers not inflamed. I think it could have been a combination of me training before this blood test. I also think that potentially what I'm taking right now for my hair is IU58841, which I did a video on previously. It's an untested compound and I don't know if this is adding a lot more stress to my liver to process and metabolize IU58841. I'm not happy with my AST being 48 and my ALT being pretty much top of reference range as well. So we'll be going to get another blood test because having high liver enzyme values is not ideal at all for long-term liver health. And keeping your liver safe, you want these to be under. So I will go and get another blood test in a few months time to just see that these come down. My PSA rose over the three year period, still well under reference range. I find this interesting because I am on dutasteride for my hair. I find it interesting that with such low DHT levels, my PSA rose. So I will want to keep an eye on that. It's still under reference, under reference range, but something to keep an eye on. And I'm not sure if the TRT is contributing to that. I don't think it is because I'm crushing my DHT with dutasteride, but it could have just been a one-off value. Interesting and I will keep an eye on that in the future. Parathyroid hormone, well within reference range, smack bang pretty much in the middle at 4.3, no issues there. Uh, my blood work itself, so my hemoglobin actually went down from when I was natural, so I don't know how that has happened, being on TRT. My hematocrit has also gone, gone down since when I was natural. So it's gone from 0.513, yeah, pretty much three years ago to 0.49, right? So my blood is not super thick, which is good. I'm happy with that. All the other values look good here. White cell counts look good and all my platelets and stuff look good. So I'm happy with that. And mainly for this, I'm just happy that my blood is not thick. Hematocrit, you don't want really to be over like 0.53, 0.54, because that is telling you that your blood and your red blood cell count is getting high and you don't want thick blood, especially on TRT, which increases the production of red blood cells. We want to make sure that that's as low as possible um, without giving blood. Some people, especially my vaginal cycle, need to uh, give blood to get this level significantly down if they're on heavy amounts of gear. But at 100 milligrams a week, I don't think it's a significant issue as seen in blood test results. So I'm happy with that. And then the last one that I got tested separately, it's a bit of a harder test here in Australia, it takes a lot longer, but I had my DHT level checked. Keeping in mind I'm on dutasteride because I don't want high DHT levels to, to try and protect my hair. I'm trying to keep my DHT levels down as far as possible. And that came in at 0 0.5. Now this is blood serum levels, it's not necessarily reflective of how much DHT is in your scalp tissue, but I think it's a relatively close proxy to get an idea of if you've crushed your DHT levels enough to bring it under the threshold to stop balding. I've done a video on this previously, so I won't go too much into it, but at 0 0.5, the female reference range for DHT is between about 0 0.1 nanomoles per liter and 0 0.3 nanomoles per liter. So me being at 0 0.5 DHT levels, I'm happy with this. Obviously, my testosterone replacement therapy is going to increase this because more is getting converted to DHT, but I'm happy to be at 0 0.5 because I'm very close to the female reference range for DHT and that's a lot better for me because 
females rarely experience um, balding. So for me to be close to the female reference range, hopefully I can hold on to my hair a lot longer. At some point I will go bald in my life because my genetics are not very favorable, but if I can stretch out that period and hold on to my hair for an extra 10, 15 years than what I would have naturally, that's a win for me. Um, and yeah, so for me to be 0.5 on TRT at top of the reference range, testosterone levels, I'm pretty happy with that. And I still needed to get my estrogen checked, which I'll do in the following video, as well as a few other tests around my lipids. I need to get those checked, my APOB, my inflammation, and C-reactive protein. I need to get checked, which I will do in a follow-up video, but this can just be like a part one. And yeah, 100 milligrams a week has put me top of the reference range, and I'm happy with that, feel much better. And this just goes to show that you don't need 200 milligrams a week of testosterone replacement therapy this at 100 has already put me top of the reference range and I'm really happy with that because it just goes to show that, you know, a lot of these guys out there saying, yeah, I take 200 milligrams a week and I'm having all these issues like high blood pressure, like chest pain, like redness in the face, um, you know, stress, anxiety, not being able to sleep, hair loss, libido issues, probably due to E2 and prolactin floating too high, especially if you're getting a lot of conversion of testosterone to estrogen, goes to show that 200 milligrams a week is probably, I would say definitely actually way too much for TRT and 100 for me at least, and I'm 100 kilos as well, has put me top of the reference range. So you don't need that much. And I actually think for TRT, especially for TRT and long-term health on taking TRT, um, I think less is more. So thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.